I have learned the importance and power of taking care of me so that I can take care of them. Most of the time, it's the other way around, right? We're giving out of an empty cup and you have to take care of yourself so that you can take care of the people that you love. And that's going to look differently for all of us. Hi, you're listening to the Zan Tyler Podcast. When my family started our homeschooling journey, there were so many decisions to make, but one of our best decisions was choosing to use BJU Press Homeschool. I've never seen my kids so excited to get textbooks before. I'm amazed by how interesting and interactive the lessons are. My kids actually look forward to them. We use the online video lessons for all our courses, but I know some families choose to teach from the textbooks. What I love is that I can trust BJU Press to uphold our values. The Bible and biblical principles are woven throughout each subject. I'll admit, I was a bit nervous when I started homeschooling, but I've found a wonderful online community of other BJU Press homeschool families and consultants. The Homeschool Hub also makes my job easier. I can set up our schedules and rearrange them with just a few clicks. On the dashboard, I can see each of my kids' progress and the assignments page shows me quickly what's ready for me to check or grade. I'm glad my son's biology assignments are automatically graded. BJU Press Homeschool has given us the tools and confidence to homeschool our children. For more information, do what I did and visit the BJU Press Homeschool website or talk with your local HomeWorks consultant. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Zan Tyler podcast, where our goal is to help you thrive on your homeschooling journey. Let me take just a minute to ask you to please subscribe to this podcast wherever you listen. And if this podcast has encouraged you, please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's amazing how each review really does help us. We're available on YouTube now, so you can watch our amazing guests as well as listen to them. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, where we have even more content and some really great reels. We have a great podcast for you today. My new friend, Soj Puga, will be sharing her story. She's a military wife and a beautiful Latina homeschooling mom of three. She loves to encourage mothers and women through her own personal story and through her lifestyle content on Instagram. So stick around. I think you'll really be encouraged. Well, so thank you so much for being on the podcast with me today. I just feel like you're one of my new best friends. Oh, thank you. Likewise, I feel the same. You're so easy to talk to. Well, tell me a little bit as we get started. Tell me about your family. Tell me about your life growing up a little bit, if you don't mind, and then how you met okay. your husband. I just think your story is so encouraging oh. and so fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, my name is Sochil, and I was born in Mexico, but I was raised in California, and I'm one of five, and of course, I'm the oldest, and I grew up with just my mom, a single mom, because my dad actually passed away in a car accident when I was six years old, so it was just me and my mom and the kids, and, you know, it was a struggle. It was hard, and then one day, I decided to go to church out of desperation and just not finding any answers anywhere else and I ended up at church and I fell in love with it I feel like God met me there and he answered all of the questions I had and I needed to know and then fast forward to when I was 15 I met my husband at that church and it was during a time you know I was 15 I wasn't looking for a relationship I was so young in my Christian walk and uh, I actually have always said this story but I came into church late that day and my husband's family was already there and they had just come from Hawaii and planted themselves in the same church. And so I walk in, I was late that day and I saw the back of my husband's head and I just remember hearing the Lord saying, that's going to be your husband. And at the time, you know, I was just like, I rebuke these thoughts. These are not from the Lord and all of these things. And, you know, I, I saw his face and I was just like, wow, this guy is so handsome. And I never said anything. I just kept that in my heart. And, you know, years later, we started dating when I was around 19, 20. We got married when I was around 22, 23. Ten years later, here we are with three beautiful kids. My oldest, I have two boys and one girl. The oldest is nine. My second one is about to be seven. And my baby girl's turning four this weekend. So, yeah, we've been 
It's been a world one, but I'm so happy that we're here and that we're... Okay, so I'm going to stop you for just a minute because I want to go back and ask you a question. So you weren't, you didn't grow up in the church and one no. day you just decided you were going to church. How old were you? So I used to go to a uh, Catholic church. My grandparents used to take me there. But every time I would ask the teachers in like catechism, these hard questions of if, if God was good and if he was real, why would he take a six-year-old's? father away and they just could never answer any of those questions so I stopped going to church and then I just had all of these questions I was very angry I was very sad depressed and I remember my cousin invited me to church and I remember saying God if you're real you're gonna answer me and at that time my mom had broken um, I think both of her feet and I said if you're real we're going to go to church and you're going to heal my mom. And that's going to be the sign that you are real and that you are my father. And that what happened to my dad was not your doing. And so we go to church and long story short, somebody prays for my mom. My mom came in with a walker and she came out of that service walking without the walker. So I knew that God had heard my prayers and I've never looked back ever since. Mm -hmm. So that was like my true story of, okay, God is real and no one can ever undo this for me, regardless of what I go through from here on, because we continue to suffer, you know, but um, yeah, that, that was that was it. It was he, he just let me know that he was real through healing my mom. And so therefore I could I felt like I could trust again and that there was a real God. So, Soj, let me ask you this. Where were your mom and dad originally from? OK, my mom and my dad were from this state called Guanajuato in Mexico. And is that where you were born or were you born in the States? Yes, I was born in Mexico, the same place, same Guanajuato. And then my parents brought me, my dad actually came first and he secured a job. And then he uh, called for my mom and I, and I was about like one or two years old. And then we joined him in the States. Oh, okay. That's great. And so then fast forward, you met your husband in church when you yes. were 15. Yes. And then quickly, what, what transpired in your life after that? So I met him when I was 15. But like I said, I was just very passionate about church. I was the translator because we it was a bilingual church, mainly Hispanic, mainly Spanish speaking. And I would translate up there for the teenagers who speak English. Uh, so I was a translator and I was just heavily involved. I was a youth leader and I spent a lot of my teenage years and my early adulthood doing that and pursuing education. So that's what I focused on. And I just was had no interest in being in a relationship or anything like that. And my husband has his own testimony, which is amazing. And he was just not ready when I when we were younger. Uh, and I just wasn't willing to I wasn't willing to settle for less than what God had for me. And I'm not speaking about him. I'm just talking about the situation. And yeah, but fast forward, you know, I, I feel like the Lord uh, matured him. He matured me. And then uh, it was beautiful because we both served the Lord. We both got to know each other and develop a friendship before it evolved to anything else. And I always say that the basis and the foundation of a strong marriage it is having your own relationship with the Lord but also having like a deep friendship, true, genuine friendship yes. with your partner. Um, a so, amen to that. I married my best friend yes. and we're still best friends. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which is really so you, nice. it, yes, because you'll always love them, but there will be times where, oh, I don't like you, but you have to nurture that. <laughs> I like, I love you and I like you. Well, which is a good thing. And then one day you'll be like us and our last child left home and you look each other at, <laughs> after all of the the busyness of child raising and homeschooling and you think, boy, it's a good thing we still like each other. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I, I can't. I, I can't wait, but I can wait <laughs> yes, for, for that yes. moment. Because those are precious years you have right now. So y'all got married. We did. And then we were still in California. My husband decided to join the military. And by that time, I already had my firstborn and my secondborn. And so he decided to join in 2018. And we moved to New York. That was his first duty station. I, I personally had never lived anywhere else besides, you know, California. And of course, being born in Mexico, mm -hmm. but I never experienced what living there was like. And so going to New York was a 
culture shock in every single possible way from the weather, from the people, the food, just being a military community. I had no idea what to expect and everything was just so new. But I know that it was a purpose of the Lord to take us from our comfort zone and take us to a new place to be able to build our family and grow. So you just always knew you wanted to homeschool. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> I, I did not. I, I, re I actually remember once saying I'm never going to be one of those weird moms that homeschools. I said that once I remember and now my motto is never say never because you just honestly never know. That's exactly right. Tell us a little bit about the Hispanic community that sometimes the homeschool choice is not the favorite or the first choice, just like with our families. So the thing with the Hispanic culture is that, you know, your parents come, your ancestors come here so that you can have a chance at having an education, at having a career, at being able to, you know, make money and live that American dream. So when sometimes we say, oh, we're going to homeschool, they're kind of like, what are you talking about? We just did all of this so that you can have a, a better life. And I always say this, I feel like people reject what they don't understand. And that's, it, it's scary. It's something new. And especially with people that, um, for example, don't have an, a, you know, a background in education or didn't get to go to school and get a degree. All of those things play a factor. Confidence plays a factor because we, we grow up with the mentality that they know better. Everybody else knows better besides us. Like all the American people uh, know better. They know what they're doing. They're used to living in this country and here we are coming into a country that is foreign and so therefore we need to follow in their footsteps and it's a path it's helped so many of you know of, of the hispanic community but i also in my experience want to show there there's another path and it's just as good if not even better sometimes so how long have you been homeschooling now so this is my third year i started homeschooling in california actually i've homeschooled in three states so i started in california with my little guy and uh, I felt that pressure being a first time mom and, you know, starting him in early education. And because that's what society pushes, the earlier you start, the better. And I, yes, we were at this church and they had a private school. So we signed him up. We were paying a ton of money every month. And one day it was a, a parent, yeah, parent day. And so I got to see what they do all day. And I was just sitting there and I, truly believe it was the voice of God telling me, like, you are more than capable of doing this at home. Um, the teachers were amazing. I loved what he was learning. I loved that he was with other kids, but I just kept uh, feeling this tug in my heart that I needed to pull him out and do, do it on my own with him. So I started there, but then when we moved to New York, I felt like everything was so new that I... And the homeschooling law is much more restrictive there, too. So that had to yes. be a little intimidating. It, it was very intimidating, but... And just cold. Either you take them or, or they have to ride the bus in, when it snows. And it's just scary driving in snow when you're not used to that, right? Uh, so when we went to New York, I said, let's just try public school and... I went through that phase that moms go through, like, you know, the withdrawal of not having your baby at home and thinking they're so young. When is my four or five year old mm -hmm. doing away from me eight hours of the day? I just don't understand. And that feeling never went away. Every time I would put him on the bus, I would just cry when I would go home. And but I was so scared to pull him out because I was not confident. I didn't believe that I could do higher grades. I thought, oh, of course, I can do preschool. I can do basic numbers and letters, but I can't do what the professional teachers do. And so then I start. I spent my time researching a lot, researching videos, researching how are other moms doing it. Uh, and I, the more uh, resources I found, the better I felt in, in knowing, okay, I don't have to know everything. I just need to make the decision. But I, it still took me a, a year to make it. He still went to public school for a year. You know, sometimes I think that making the decision to homeschool is much more difficult than homeschooling itself. Once you make the jump, you just 
put your mind to it and your heart to it. And the Lord gives you grace and wisdom and understanding. And I have this plaque in my office that says a worried mom does better research than the FBI. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) that is so true. So So true. You know, and so then you just, you do what, what Elizabeth Elliott says, you just do what comes next and it works. But it's that, it's that decision that can be still so, countercultural that is it so is. difficult to make on the outside looking in it is because then you feel the weight of the responsibility of oh my gosh i know that i birthed birthed this child but now their education falls on me as well and i have two other little ones who are not ready for any sort of academic anything and so it was very scary but at the same time i'm so grateful that i i did it anyway uh that i was scared but i did it what would you tell moms that are in the same place that you were then thinking about homeschooling, but really scared to make the commitment? I would just say that it's okay to be scared and it's okay to try it. And let's say that you do it and you just figure out, you know what, this is not for me. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Public school will always be ready to take your children back. So it's it, it feels like, oh my gosh, I don't want to make the wrong decision, but there are you will see once you make the decision if it's right or not for you. And most of the time, the moms that I've known, which is mostly all of us, is that we were scared, but then we saw the benefits and then we started gaining confidence and then we just never looked back. So what are the benefits to you, Soch? What do you think are the greatest or just some of the benefits of homeschooling? My gosh, I love that I get to see my children grow. I just taught my, well, he's he's six right now, but I was able to teach him how to read. I was there when he started reading his first words. I didn't miss that. So all of these different milestones that I would have missed if, you know, he was away in school, public school. I love that I get to be here and disciple them, disciple their hearts. One of my biggest worries was how can I disciple and sword my child's life if they're away from me for eight hours? When am I going to find time in the day to do that? And so that's one of the biggest benefits is that I get to shape and mold their lives according to whatever my husband and I feel, you know, that uh, we need to do based on, you know, the Bible and just our own family culture and dynamics. So that's one of the benefits. And one of the, uh, I guess I could just say practical benefits is that we get to have slow mornings. I don't have to rush anywhere to, there's no rush to be anywhere at any time. You know, so I really get to make my family my own and we get to live out life the way that we want to. And having that freedom, I think in a culture where it's always do, 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 perform, perform, be better, be the best, get the most money. I I love that I get to do uh, the opposite or even if even if we're wanting to do some of those things, do it in a way that is true to us, you know. Right. So what about your husband? Did Was he gung-ho homeschooling? Did you yeah. know how he felt about homeschooling? How did you approach that with him? He's in the military. Yes. He's Hispanic. Yes. And so he, you know, he probably had some internal conflict too. Yes. So my husband actually really struggled in, in Hawaii. Uh, he went to a public school, but I mean, excuse me, a private school, but it wasn't it, you know, they didn't teach him the way that he learned. It, you, that's the other thing is that homeschooling allows you the freedom to teach your child in their way that they learn, whether it be visual, sensory, whatever it is. And I was really scared to talk to him about it because I just didn't want to have that fight. I've seen how it goes when a, a couple is not on the same page about something that it's going to change your life, especially when it comes to children. I just didn't want to have that battle. So I remember praying And I said, Lord, if my husband is not on board, I'm not doing this. I don't want this fight. And I prayed about it. And the next day I talked to him and I did all the research on whatever curriculum I was going to use in case he came up with questions. (laughs) I already had answers for him. And so I, I prayed and then I spoke to him the next day and he immediately said, "Okay, I feel peace. I think you should do this. And I was uh, kind of shocked. I was like, are you sure? Like, are you just saying that to please me? He's like, no, I listened. I can tell that you've been praying. I can tell that you've researched. If this is what you believe, I will take your lead. And that blessed me so much, you know, because we're always taught to take the lead of your husband. But in this instance, he was saying, I will 
trust you and take your lead in this. And so that was all that I needed. It, it was like maybe three days till the kids had to go back to public school. And that day I went to withdraw them. I'm my oldest because he was the only one going from school. And so he sees the benefits now. Whenever my kids talk about a subject or say something, he's like, wow, I can tell that they're really learning. And he loves that. Now, your second one, while you were homeschooling, did you put him in preschool? Yes, we tried it for one day against, again, my motherly instinct. I knew this boy was not made for public school or private school, at least at that age. And I took him and he cried the entire time and and he came home and he said, Mommy, I just want you to teach me. And that reassured me even more. Okay, Lord, I see all the signs from every which way. I know this is what you want me to do. This is what I'm, I will obey and I will take the next step, even though I'm so scared. The thing that I was the most scared about, if I can be honest, is math. I struggled with math a lot as a child. And that was one of the biggest things that I felt. What if I don't do right by the boys and, and I'm not a good math teacher. But then we figured it all out, and I love the power of outsourcing, and I don't have to teach it. So <laughs> that's, I, that's that's exactly right. Well, you know, I had the same thing. So we start homeschooling in the 80s, and I know nobody in the world who's homeschooling, and then I'm threatened with jail. You know, it's the whole thing. <laughs> so I'm homeschooling my oldest son, but I put my four-year-old in preschool. Yeah, okay. He's got a long attention span. I thought, he's going to love this. Yes. And after two weeks... He, I was taking him to preschool one day. He looks at me. He says, now wait, you're teaching Ty at home. You're staying home. <laughs> Ty's at home and I'm going there. I'm not going there anymore. Oh, good for him. And I thought, well, I wasn't expecting this, but okay. And then, you know, it's interesting how the Lord, when we have these start, stop, start, stop moments, the Lord is so faithful to bring our whole family together. You, I mean, just to help us, those little grace pushes when our kids say, I'm not doing this anymore. <laughs> you know, it's pretty amazing. So now you have the three. Are you homeschooling three yet? Or is your daughter, your daughter is still four? Yeah, she's still four. But because she sees her older brothers homeschooling, she really wanted me to homeschool her this year. So I got her a little cart. So we're doing just very gentle introduction to ABCs, one, two, threes, all, all of those things. So I do have something gentle for her. It's nothing formal. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say that I'm homeschooling all three of them now. Oh, that's fabulous. So if you could give some advice to the young moms out there like you and give them some advice on how to not just survive, but thrive in their homeschooling, what would that be? You know, right now... I have learned the importance and power of taking care of me so that I can take care of them. Most of the time, it's the other way around, right? We're giving out of an empty cup. And I would always put all of these excuses of, I can't, I don't have time. If it's not this kid that needs something, it's the other kid. Uh, but then I started feeling conviction of, I'm not okay. I'm, I'm mentally struggling. I'm emotionally struggling having these outbursts because also... You know, having the children at home is hard. The teaching part and then the parenting part, it's always intertwined, you know. So uh, my biggest thing is that you have to take care of yourself so that you can take care of the people that you love. And that's going to look differently from for all of us. For me, I needed to get up and move more. I needed to spend more time in the word. Uh, I needed to pray more and just not depend on myself because I, that's what I was doing. And sometimes we're on autopilot and we're, you know, being pulled to clean the kitchen and to wipe, you know, somebody's, you know, butt or just all of these different <laughs> things. And and I just realized that's that not glamorous, right? It's not yeah. glamorous at all. And I just have taken time to uh, take a step back. And one of the biggest things that has changed my life in the past month is teaching them how to make their own lunch. So I have a nine-year-old, an almost seven-year-old, and a four-year-old, and they've been doing lunch so that they know, hey, I'm also very much capable. Mommy gives me a hot breakfast in the morning and a hot dinner at night for lunch. We are more than capable of making our own food. In the beginning, I struggled because I had all of these thoughts of, is that neglect? Am I pushing them to grow up too quick? All of these things. And then I just, 
again, followed the Lord's uh, voice and no, this teaches them responsibility. Like they know how to do their laundry and stuff like that. But when it came to food, I always struggled. And that was my biggest thing that just sucked the life out of me having to cook three meals a day. And yes. Yes. Oh, you know, as my boys got older, they were athletes. And so okay. it's like we get up, we eat breakfast, we have mm -hmm. a snack, we eat lunch, mm -hmm. we have a snack. Somebody <laughs> asked me one day, because I was at this point, I'm looked at at this homeschool leader, which I shouldn't have been, but it's the 80s. And I had homeschooled for more than six weeks, you know, so I'm <laughs> yeah. a yeah. and people would say, have you ever thought about quitting? And I want to say yes, every day at lunch, lunch, <laughs> lunch is overwhelming for some reason and I wish I'd had the foresight to do that earlier like you did we got to the point for a while where we would go to this little place down the street it was a little Mexican restaurant and then there was another place where we could get hot dogs and neither one of those things were like on our healthy menu and I can remember yeah. a man giving me a hard time for being there during the lunch hour one time and I looked at him and I said <laughs> Every kid in this district has an unhealthy lunch. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah. You leave me alone. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, so sometimes yeah. you do what you have to do in the moment, and then you get better at it. Absolutely, yes, and it saves a lot of mental sanity. So that that would be the one thing that I would say. I'm really big on just outsourcing on on knowing that not yes, you made this decision, but not everything falls on you as a mother or as a homeschooler. There's so many resources out there where you can outsource and you can teach your kids so that you don't feel this big burden on you all the time. That's right. Um, I just want to take just a second. This is a great time to thank our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool, the sponsor of the Zan Tyler podcast, for all of the resources they make available to homeschooling moms that, that relieve that burden. And I'm thinking right now, particularly of the video courses that take the teaching load off of those courses. You, you just don't feel like you can teach or you don't want to teach. And um, we have friends in the Hispanic community actually who have used the videos as a way for the mom to learn English while the children are getting their instruction in English. So I want to thank them for all the things they're doing to help the homeschool movement. But outsourcing your right so is, is we don't have to do it all we don't we don't and I'm glad I'm learning it now I wish I would have known this before but I know that there are so many mothers out there who need to know hey you have the permission to say okay I'm not going to do these things someone else is going to take charge or you can pay somebody to come clean your home whatever it That's is right just know that there there is help out there you just need to help yourself that's right. Tell us a little bit. Jo well, Joe and I were looking at your Instagram account last night, and there, oh, were, there were several things that I love. Joe found this first, and, you know, it was the beginning of the school year, and you were writing out the things. They were all C's of things you wanted yes. to accomplish in the school year. And then you had a lot, you do a lot to encourage Hispanic moms. So, so tell us some of those things, some of the ways you want to, and it encourages all moms, just not Hispanic moms, but tell us what you're doing. So the, the thing that you saw with all the C's, every year I just ask the Lord for like a theme. What is the theme of that, you know, year? Because it's so easy to get distracted and want to do all the things, right? All the sports, all of the events. So that that's kind of like a reference to bring me back. Okay, does this align with whatever our goals are for this year? And so I, I came up with all these words that I um, that are with C because it just helps me remind me and bring me back when I'm trying to do everything. And so I share these things on my social media in hopes of encouraging all moms, but specifically mothers that look like me. Like I said, that when I first started researching about homeschooling and every video that would come up was beautiful, lovely ladies, but I couldn't identify with their lifestyle, with their culture and I said, you know what, then I need to do it. If I can't find, I'm now I'm seeing a bunch of moms. Uh, I just did a collaboration with the, these beautiful moms that are from Colombia, Venezuela, different places. And we just made a, a short form video saying like, we are here, like we do exist and we are here. Even though if I'm not mistaken, this is what she said that uh, only 15%, like in the homeschool world, it, only 15% are hi Hispanic. I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that. But we just wanted to encourage other moms. And so that's what I use my platform for. I speak on anything from motherhood, but also on the individual person that I am outside of motherhood, which is 
Xochitl, the person that loves beauty and skincare. I talk about everything, friendship, the Lord, um, just stuff like that. And it's been a, a, such a blessing to be able to connect with other mothers uh, because, you know, social media can be, like we said, very curated, very perfect. It's always a highlight reel, right, of, mm -hmm. of people's of lives. the but best, not the can, worst. Yes, of the best, yes. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, it can also be a tool used to connect you with other moms. So I always tell moms, like, don't stay at home. You have to connect with other people because both motherhood and homeschooling can be lonely sometimes. You know, when you have a kid who is struggling with whatever subject or you have, you know, you're going through your own um, just issues. It's hard sometimes, but when you have a community to say, hey, Sochil, you're doing a great job. Keep going. That it just gives you that little push that you need. Okay, it was a bad day. It's not a bad life. And we can keep going. So that's that's what I use my social media for. Okay, and... so there are two C's there, community and connect. Do you remember what some of the other C's on your list were? Or was that too long ago? <laughs> okay, so the theme for this year is Christ. Uh, and then under that is just Bible, prayer, worship. That's something that we want to prioritize. Connection, meals together as a family, family time and dates. So go on individual dates with each child. Uh, me and my husband do dates. Uh, just fostering connection, I think, from for homeschooling sometimes. Um, I want to say yes to an event, but I'm saying no to connection when I do that. So it just reminds me, like, nope, your goal is connection right now. And then uh, fostering the next C would be childhood. And under it, I put fun, joy, laughter, creativity, because I struggle with I'm not the artsy mom. So I need to be reminded, hey, the kids need to do art or the kids need to do something that is mm -hmm. jumping on the trampoline, stuff like that. I, I have a hard time being that mom. So I need a reminder, hey, these are little you know, children that need to live out their childhood. Let them be kids. <laughs> and then the next one Can is you character. Can you your list? Or is, is oh, that the best sure. thing? It's a beautiful list. Yeah. Yes, I have it. I have it posted in my bathroom, in my fridge, in the kids' room, just so that we're all on on the same page of oh, so you know this is what idea. we're trying to do. Yeah, thank you. And uh, and you know what you're saying, Soch, is so important that the academics are important, but our relationships yes. really lay the foundation. Our relationships with Christ, our relationship with each other in the home. And family unity and strength yes. is a great reason to homeschool. Yes. And Absolutely. It's just, just one of those benefits that will just pay off in dividends for the rest of their lives and the rest of your yeah. life. We have grandkids now who are being homeschooled. And, you know, we just love that time with them, the time we have. And um, yeah. so time is that precious gift that homeschool gives us yes time absolutely i 100 percent agree with you so well such so is there anything else you want to say i just want to to say thank you you know thank you for being a faithful homeschool mom thank you for reaching out to those in your community and i thank you for being thank here with you. me today i appreciate the opportunity and i hope any mom that is out there that is Maybe you are already homeschooling and you're struggling. Like, it's okay. You can take a break and then come back to it. Maybe you're that mom that you're on the fence and maybe your husband doesn't support your decision. It's okay. Just keep praying about it. Just keep waiting. The time will come. Just don't give up on that instinct or that gut feeling that you feel. And if you're doing great, I love it. Give that to other moms. If you feel confident and you feel like you're doing great, reach out to another mom who's not who's not confident or maybe the one that seems the most confident sometimes is the one that needs the most help and needs that hey you're doing a great job you know so that that's it that's all I want to say thank you so, so much so for giving tell me um tell the moms out there today how they can find you where they can find you okay I'm gonna have to spell it out because my name is a little complicated but if you're on Instagram or you're on TikTok uh it's at Xochitl, Xochitl underscore Puga so it's x-o-c-h I-T-L underscore P-U-G-A. Okay, spell it one more time for those of us from the South. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, here, one more time with our little Southern twang in our okay. head. It's at X-O-C-H-I-T-L underscore P-U-G-A. 
perfect. That's perfect. So I just, I do, I want to thank you again today. Um, and you can find me as always at zantyler.com. If you're interested in some of the help for Spanish, Hispanic par parents at BJU Press, you can go to homeschoolhelp.com slash map and find, if you will look in Florida, you will find one of our Hispanic consultants, Jesse Johns. You can text or email her. You'll find her contact information on the map and she can put you in touch with that one of the Hispanic consultants in your area. So we just want you to know um, that we're there for you as well. Yeah. And, and uh, so again, so thank you so much for your outreach and your ministry. Thank you for being thank with you. us then. And may, may God bless you all in your homeschooling. May he give you grace and strength and love. And until next time, we'll see. Thank you so much. Have a, have a great rest of your evening and thank you for having me.